So, now you know how to make a bear paw. It's not like the snowshoes we use. Not so easy to walk in. What makes you think they're so easy to walk in? You haven't tried bear paws yet. I'm not all that sure I want to. <laughs> Someday you might be glad of them. Out in the bush, caught in the blizzard, you can make a couple of these in no time. Yeah, they might save your life. XNY-556 calling XNY-556-A Apple. Come in, please. Over. XNY-556-A Apple. Hi, George. Over. Hi, Mike. I'm looking for Joe. Is he around? Well, he's right here. Hi, George. You want me? Joe, you know Charlie Kipling? Well, sure. Trapper lives back in the bush around 10 miles from Pine Forks. That's him. He's been sick. The doc wants some drugs sent up to him. Think you could make it? Well, the dog sled will take five hours from here. You want me to go tonight? It's not that urgent. I just thought you might like to take a run up there tomorrow. Okay. I'll pick up the stuff from your office in the morning. Fine. Thanks a lot, Joe. Over and out. Could we come, Joe? Uh, sure. But you can't ride the sled all the time. You've got to do quite a bit on snowshoes. Yeah, let's go. I want to try out those bear paws after all. I just don't see how they can be all that worse than snowshoes. You don't? Okay. You try then. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Chuck. This is what you want? Seems to me your shortest route would be through the game reserve. That's right. Take a look at it on your way, Joe. Last time I was up, the game still seemed pretty thin. Oh, you think somebody's trapping out there? Could be. Jack Brass? I hope not. Well, who's Jack Brass? Trapper. We closed off this area three years ago because it seemed pretty well trapped out. We had to give the game time to recover. Well, Jack Brass had a trap line there. He didn't like being moved. And he's not a nice man. If you find him around, just make a wide circle and tell me about it when you get back. After all, I want you to get back. Now, don't worry. We get back before dark. <laughs> I think we stop here for a little and make some hot chocolate. I guess you boys would like to rest for a little. Are you kidding? Whose idea was this anyhow? Yours, remember? What's the matter with you two? I could go on for hours. Oh, boy. Would you like to make the hot chocolate? Sure. Come on, Chuck. We'll get a fire going. Why me? You'd like to drive afterwards? Gosh, sure would. Can I stand in the back? Yeah, if you want to, but don't fall off. I guess that's a bad thing to do. Well, if you don't know your team and you're alone, they won't stop for you. And you could have a long walk home. Well, let's go. I'm ready for that hot chocolate. There's more chocolate if anybody wants it. No, I think it's time we moved on. Joe? 
How come this area got all trapped out? Well, maybe because the furs that came from here were pretty good. Fetched a lot of money. And when that happens, men get kind of greedy. I guess that's life. Oh, sure. Men don't know when to stop when they're onto a good thing. Until they're told, and sometimes even then, they don't listen. Where are we going now? How come? Did he just lie down and die? Poison. Poison? I mean, he's picked something up. Well, he left a pretty good track. I think I'll follow it for a little and see where he came from. You go back and tell Mike to come on slowly, okay? Bob? No, raccoon. Didn't poison. So Zach tracking to see where it came from. Why? I don't know. He's a boss. Wants us to follow up slowly. Okay. I just hope these guys in front get the message. I'll get them started. Go ahead, Buckeye. Go ahead. Go ahead. something else. How could a raccoon get poisoned way out here in the bush? Well, he could have picked it up around some shack and then traveled quite a distance before it died. Picked up what? Well, how would I know? Whatever it is, got Joe worried. Jackrabbit have eaten by the raccoon. That's why the raccoon died. Eating a jackrabbit? The jackrabbit was poisoned too. Left as bait. You know what this means? Pretty soon, no living thing will be left in this forest, nothing that breathes. Only the trees and the wind. How did it get here? The poison, I mean. Some men put it there. Why? Greed. Fur, if you want to make a big kill, it's uh, quicker than trapping. And last chance of being caught if you don't care how much damage you do. Jack Brass. I didn't say that. Well, it sure sounded like him somehow. Maybe. I think you handled this dog team pretty well. I guess it's a good dog team. Why don't the three of you go back to uh, Charlie Kipling's place and give him his medicine? And then come back to Pine Forks. I'll meet you there. Well, what'll you be doing? Taking a look around. Remember what George said? Make a wide circle? Yeah, but not too wide. You can't see what goes on in the middle. And uh, we don't know if it's Jack Brass. Well, he sure sounds mean enough. Oh, he is. But I know him, so don't worry. Now, Marsh. <sighs> Okay. Let's go. Go ahead, Buckeye. Go ahead.
night, Joe. Jack Brass. I had a feeling it was you. You're using poison now, huh? What makes you think? Lots of pelts, no traps. I know a bootleg set up when I see it. I guess you know it's a serious offense. Sure, and I guess you know that's why I got to get you. You all that anxious to get yourself hanged? Whoa, my guy, whoa! You think that was a rifle shot? That's what it sounded like. Let's go back. It could be Joe in trouble. Might be the kind of trouble we don't want to get Gabby mixed up in. But we just can't leave Joe. Well, let's get these guys turned around. Come on, come on, guy. Gee, come on, guy. Come on, guy. Go ahead. Gee, go ahead. Gee, go ahead. This guy knows me, so we gotta finish him up. Sure. Okay, so why stop me? Someday, somebody will find the the body of the deceased, if you'll forgive me for mentioning it. So what? With a hole in its head. <laughs> kind of thing starts people asking questions. Awkward questions. And I don't want to be on the receiving end. How come you found us here? I found dead animals. Dead with poison, I know what that means. What does it mean? That someone's mad. Or a fool and he has to be stopped. You got anybody with you? Nobody. I think he's lying. I heard a dog team. I heard it too, but it moved away. So we better get rid of this guy pretty fast. In case they come back or somebody else starts nosing around. Sure. Okay, what are we arguing about? Let's get on with it. Not that. your way, I told you that. You got any better ideas? That river out back runs pretty fast, under the ice. So what? So we put him under the ice. Won't be long before he's right out in the middle of the lake. Still under the ice. And then in the spring, right after the breakup, some party out fishing finds some poor guy that's had an accident without a mark on him, except maybe a little bruising. That's pretty neat. <laughs> I have a delicate mind. Let's get moving. It's too bad. Right, Joe's tracks. Well, the bush right over here. Now what do we do? Well, look, you the guy can handle this buggy. Wants to take Abby back to Indian River. Tell George and Sergeant Scott, and I'll follow Joe's tracks and take a look. No. Just take a look, that's all. I'll be okay. Somebody's got to be with you. Just to make sure you just take a look. I know you, Chubb. Look, this isn't the sort of thing we want a girl to get mixed up with. Okay. Just sit here and wait. It'll be pretty cold, I guess. Okay, but you keep right behind me. You just get that. Anything you say, Chump. Mush on, bud. The sooner he gets in the river, the better. Go ahead, Buckeye. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't think you'd get away with this? Why not? People know where I am. That's a little beside the point, if I may say so. Is it? Sure, because they won't know where you will be. There's a lot of, lot of river and a lot of ice, and it's going to be a long time before they find you. And we'll be far away. Come on.
we do, Chub? Just follow and see what gives. Okay. You sure we should wait here? I'll come back. No! Come on, let's go. downstream. Okay, let's get there. Stick him under it and make sure he stays. Hear that? We gotta do something. Not yet, Chubb. Yeah, but Mike will be pretty near to Indian River by now. Yeah, but... Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Where's this darn ice you've been yakking about? Not much, brother. We'll come back and pick this up after we... Did you hear that? Just the frozen branch cracking. Yeah, well, what made it crack, buddy? Ross, I'm telling you, let's get on with it. Joe's sled's back. It's parked itself in front of my office. Parked itself? That's right. No Joe and no kids. And the drugs for Charlie Kipling are still in Joe's bedroll. I've got the snowmobile outside. All we gotta do is make a hole in the ice and put him in. You're the guy that makes the holes. Yeah. I've gotta do something now or it'll be too late. You can't jump. It wouldn't help. They'd, they'd just kill you. Right, Mike? I don't know for sure, but I think so. Okay, we'll talk about it on the way. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I guess so. Too bad. In happier circumstances, we might have gone into partnership. I think I settled for the way it is. Okay. I guess I'll do. Get on with it. Okay, Joe. Walk backward. And don't try anything. This guy's a little scared of bullet holes. I'm not. Get moving! 
moving, Joe. I think I'll make you leave a little evidence, like a bullet hole. Well, I guess this is it. Tell everybody I forgive them. Who? Anybody, for anything. What are you going to do, Chop? Chop! Sanders! Gee, I guess you really fixed him. Spinach. You ought to try it sometime. Chub, look! Okay, Gabby. Okay, Joe. Jack Brass? I just saved him. He almost went under the ice. Well, just so long as it wasn't you, son. I never got a chance to try out those bear flies. With one thing and another. Tomorrow morning, outside my place, six o'clock. Six o'clock? The snow will be good and crisp after the night's frost. Okay? Well, you bought it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Six. Six.